there, it's Janice Thompson from jazzledazzlecrafts.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator working in Scotland. Uh, I think this is going to be a bit of a long video, which, you know, feel free to use the pause and the fast forward button to, if you want to join in the project, that would be grand. So what I'm doing today is I am using my, one of my really well-loved stamp sets from the annual catalogue is Touches of Texture and one of, one of the ladies that comes to my classes bought this quite some months ago and she was saying that she was looking for some ideas to use it for, you know, some ideas to get her using it more. It is a fantastic stamp set, it comes in two parts, two boxes, so you've got this one that's got this kind of, it is textured, you know, it's like paint splashes this one is like a flower but just a, a blobby bit I call it we've got a stem a little flower with lovely texture and this lovely lace stamp and then in the second one we've got this lovely wee bunch of flowers we've got a single flower here a bumblebee another flower I think this is a bit like a cornflower lovely little dragonfly and some other textures like a paint splodge and a little tiny wee splodge this is almost like um somebody stamped with a bit of fabric like sackcloth and then this is like all letters like typeface all piled up together so lots of ideas and texture here so excuse me the other thing that the lady asked me about she said I've also got envelope punch board and I've not really been using it very often and I had the other lady that was at that class is planning to buy an envelope punch board very soon and she doesn't have this tam stamp set yet and she was asking is that a good one to buy so what so what I thought was we, I would do a class based around both products the touches of texture stamp set and my and the envelope punch board this is a fantastic tool and you can do loads of stuff with it but in this project I showed them how to do two different things with it I showed them how to make a little box isn't that cute and I showed them how to make an envelope and we did four cards from the same project would you like me to show you what we did well I'm going to anyway if you want to stick with it and watch that's great if you don't that's great too but thanks for tuning in so what I'm going to do I probably do this in parts but first of all I'm going to show you this is something I do quite often when I get a new stamp set or even just sometimes when I'm just feeling a bit stressed and I need to chill out or I need to find out what a particular stamp set can do is I take a full sheet of either very vanilla or whisper white and I get a stamp set out and I stamp. Now, to be to do the project I've done, I am very, very influenced um, by a card I saw on Pinterest, and it's from a lady called Barb Brimhall. She's I don't know the lady. She's a Canadian Stampin' Up demonstrator. No, she's not Canadian. That's not true. She's she's in um, USA. She's, she's a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. She's been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator a lot longer than I have. And I have just noticed her work recently. And actually, I like quite a lot of what she does now that I've looked. But it was, first of all, I was attracted to this a card that she did. And I have encased quite a lot of what she did in this project. Particularly her colours. Mine is very... Uh, maybe changed out one colour or something can't remember exactly but I'm not looking at her project while I do mine but I know that I'm heavily heavily influenced by hers now I don't know where I've put my box I, every time I try to be organised well oh, here they are so I, I'm used the, the full sheet and first of all I'm going to put some texture down I'm just getting my blocks out I'm not done anything in preparation for this video and it might be a bit jumpy because I'm going to film it in sections and then splice them together so you're just going to have to bear with me I'm going to get quite a lot of blocks out so that I don't have to keep picking up and I don't know if I need these big ones as well 
I've taken them all out except for the huge one. I love my stamp case with all my blocks because I know I've got a, a block for every project I want to do. So first of all, I'm going to take two colours and that is the colour and all the colours I'm using in this project, quite a lot of colours, but you know, it's nice just to get your colours out and play. So I've got So Saffron and I need to clean my ink pad boxes, I can see. Crumb Cake. Early Espresso, Crushed Curry, Merry Merlot and Flirty Flamingo. Quite a mixture, six colours and they're quite a mixture, sort of a, I don't know how you would, so yeah, it's not as bad as it looks at first. So I've got two yellows, two browns and two pink base colours. So it's not, it's not as awful. So yellow, pink and brown. Well, well, can't beat it. Anyway, I'm going to take crumb cake and so saffron and I'm going to put a bit of a back, textured background in here. So first of all with the crumb cake, if I can get... Do you know what, since we changed to the new boxes, I keep forgetting how to open and close the old ones. Anyone else like that takes time to learn some new tricks, so I'm going to need this sort of sand cloth textured one. I'm going to make a mess, I'm going to get untidy, but that's the way I roll, so you know, don't look if you're a tidy freak. I'm going to use, up, I think, all but two stamps out of them. Um, this set in this project, which is amazing. So I need to get a bit comfier. Excuse me while I move my some things out from under my desk because I can't can't get my feet under my desk because I had things hiding under. There. That's better. Now I can get closer to you. So I'm going to use the crumb cake and. This, this stamp is a fantastic stamp and I use this a lot. And I'm just randomly, although it didn't look too random because sometimes random is not what we do best, but I am trying to just plonk, basically just chucking some texture around. I'm going to clean that off and put that back in the box in a, a very slight attempt to get, I don't need that one now so we'll get the so saffron out and I'm going to use it with this one excuse me a moment Go away from the camera. Sorry about that. Biting off a bit of a cold just now. So, so saffron. You probably can't see this too well on camera, but it's worth doing. It's not that, do you know, it's not that visible on very vanilla, but it's there. And I'm just basically, not filling every gap, but filling most of the gaps with this. It doesn't matter if it overlaps, it's just, it's just giving your paper a bit of depth. You know, you can, there we go, that'll do fine. Clean that off. That away. Do you know what I'm going to do is take one stamp case away so that I can see better what I'm doing. So that's that bit done. So the next bit I want is this the spray of flowers. And I'm going to stamp that with early espresso. I'm just going to use this big block again. Close the so saffron. 
I only use them in the, 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 the background. So I've got my early espresso and the spray of flowers. Now again, we're still trying to be random. Just pick up some ink, stamp it down. Pick up some ink and stamp it down. Try to change the direction. I'm not terribly good at the random thing myself. My lady said I really challenged them today, getting them to just be random with everything. Remember to leave spaces because you're going to be putting other things in. There we go, that's enough of them. Clean that off. Not something I'm terribly good at as clean as I go. I'm a bit of a make a mess and then clean it up eventually kind of girl. Clean my desk when I can't see anymore <laughs> when I get to see what I'm doing. Okay, and then what am I going to do next? This one. I'm going to add the colour in here. So this stamp, which is, just looks like a paint splat really, but it is kind of the shape of a colour shape of a flower rather. I'm going to cut, although I'm not finished using early espresso, I am closing it because I think you all know what I'm like. If I don't I'll get all messed up. So I'm just using this blob and again I'm just going to put it in the spaces. Doesn't matter a dot if it overlaps. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Look at the colour they're building up. Isn't that fabulous? Oh, I just love it. Now we're going to put another one there. And another one squeezed in there. Okay. Enough is enough, as they say. Right, that's my flirty flamingo. Put that away. Then I'm going to take this other this stamp that's a bit like an outline of a flower. And this is just letting me see, or letting you see, what all these stamps do, what effects they give you. And I don't know about you, but when you sit and stamp like this, it is so relaxing. I'm not sure. Do you want a better check just how much of this you're seeing? Oh, most of it. <laughs> I'm quite a wee short person if you've never met me. And um, I don't quite make five foot. So, um, I've got my camera on a tripod above my work. But it's difficult for me to see the screen. So I don't always know that if I've if it's gone out of focus or if you're not seeing everything. And I can't hear you when you shout. So and I'm just stamping that over the blobby bit and I'm in no way trying to line it up or anything. I'm just going over the top. I just look arty and the you know, it's just a suggestion of colour here. Don't try to line up because I don't think it's meant to line up to be truthful with you. But I like this kind of arty look. I can kid myself on that I'm some kind of artist. Do an abstract or something. They even know what abstract means. Sometimes it means different things to different people. Right, so there I've put an outline on that flower. 
and I'm going to clean that. Did you see how the, what does my friend say? One of the girls on my team, she watches my videos and we do try to help each other by being a wee bit critical. And I, like I just suddenly, sometimes I'm talking and then I forget my words. And she just says, I have a wee brain break. So there you go, I had a wee brain break. Um, so now what am I going to have? Oh yes, this one. The typeset. And I'm going to use the crushed curry with this one. And you see, see I have start, started off with the largest stamp and I'm working my way in. So now in the spaces that I've got now I'm going to put this crushed curry in like that. Now look how it changes it, the yellow. The crushed curry goes really well with the flirty flamingo. The beauty of this is no two sheets will be the same, no matter who's done them. Wow, how's that looking? It's looking good, isn't it? So clean that off and close my I find out what way the stamp goes in. Close my crushed curry and then I'm going to bring out the early espresso now and this flower shape. I'm not sure yet when I get it. It's this shape. Just a little flower head it is. And I'm going to do that over the yellow. Over the crushed curry. Again, I'm not trying to match, it's just this is just building up a piece with just ink and paper but getting a textured look. If I missed any, shout out if you think I've missed any. I can't hear you, but you'll feel better for shouting out. All right, so that's that. Now I want a little. I want. I'm going to add some colour into this spray of flowers. So I'm actually going to use this little tiny stamp and an even tinier textured one. So I need to, this can go on there and that can go on there and then I'm going to introduce the Merry Merlot and you can use whatever colours, I'm just showing you the colours that we used because I quite, there, most of them come from Barb's card, the colours that she used, she didn't, uh, she did, her um, blog about the card that she did I will put a link in for you so you can have a look um, hers is it's not it's exactly the same colours but right so I'm just I don't know how much time I've got off to be very quick here this not the tiniest little stamp but this tiny flower I'm going to stamp it where there's open flowers on the spray of flowers and then to Three. I'm just, you know, just at doing some first generation, second, so one, two, three, you could even do four, five down the stem. It's just introducing the colour in. So you're one, two, three, four, 
five. Just be a bit careful, I've got a bit of ink on the side of the stamp. I'm just going to take that off with my chamois. Just gently, Janice. Should really do what I tell Elma. What do you say? One, two, three, four, five. Again, one, two, three, four, five. So you're getting different tones of colour. One, two, three, four, five. So you're just really adding colour to your, your recomposition there. You see, say it with flowers, so that's what we're doing here. I can't even see properly what I'm doing, to be honest, because normally I would work with my head over. But it won't matter, I'm going to cut this paper up anyway. Because it's such a busy pattern, nobody's going to notice. And to be me, it's about the process. Just relaxing. I think I've got all of those ones, so I'll clean that. Are there any mist? Don't think so. It doesn't matter anyway. It really won't matter. And this teeny teeny one, the same colour, the Merry Merlot. Just a wee bit of texture here, and I'm just going to. Well, I'm not quite sure where the, the film cut out. I think I had gone over the time. Um, I'm not quite sure, so there may be a wee gap, but basically uh, you you've, you will have seen most of what I've been doing. I'm just now just still adding some of the colour onto the buds with this tiny little texture, blobby type. It's easier when you can work with your head over I'm missing, but do you know what, That's that just adds to the texture here anyway, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Four. So one, two, three, four, and I think that's. Well, I might have missed this one. Let's put some in here. One, two, three. Little explosions of colour. I like it. And then on the original project, I just put the bumblebee in. But, um,. I think I'm just putting these stamps away. I think I like to put the dragonfly in, although maybe not fit in there. I've done this a bit tight. I think we'll maybe just go for the bee actually in this project. But you can add in the both or you know either or. Okay. Popping this bumblebee, I'm just doing with early ex early espresso and just popping them in here. Just pop them in all the spaces that you can find. I tell I seem to be doing it quite directional, but you don't have to try and move the direction of my bee around. Uh, I love bumblebees. I love all the bees. We need the bees for our food. We need bees to pollinate everything so that all our fruit and veg grow. any more spaces left. I love this little bee. There's, an, there's some other bees in Stampin' Up! sets, some great ones. I love insects. 
but necessarily like them crawling all over me but I do like to look at them I think they're fascinating I think I've just about done that there so what do you think that's really quite busy so we're going to chop this up I'm going to show you the plan I've got here so to make the box I need let me have a look for the box I need a square that is 10.7 10.7 squared and to make the envelope that I've put a tea bag in I need a piece that's 13.8 centimetres so that was where I started because the ladies had asked about their envelope punch board um, I thought right well we need to use some of the sheets so we need a 13.8 centimetre square we need a 10.7 centimetre square so that's where I started from so I came up with this template so I've got my 13 this is an A4 sheet now this is in centimetres if you're in US and you want to do this project you may have to work out your own measurements because it might not work exactly because I know that your A4 paper is slightly different but anyway for the UK and Europe this will work on our A4 so a 13.8 centimetre square here and a 10.7 square worked here so therefore I had this part and that part and this part would be waste if I just cut those two squares from so then I worked out that if I cut that along there, the whole sheet at 13.8 and then cut off that bit, that gives me a piece for my envelope and a piece that I could use on a card that I could mat and layer. And then again here, the bit that I've got left, if I cut it down at 10.7, I can cut out my square and I'm left with this piece here, which is 5.3 centimetres by 10.7. And then I'm left with this piece, which is 10.3 by 16. So if I've cut that in half at 8, and that gives me 1, 2, 3, 4 panels of my paper for cards, and my two squares that I need to do the project. So I'm going to try and do that with you and show you the cutting out um, and talk you through it as I go. So let's hope we can do this because I'm you know, following my own instructions. So I just so that you can understand what we're doing. I have to make some space on my desk. I need to move the inks out of the way. So, this, first of all, I'm going to cut at 13.8 because this is what measurement I need for the envelope. So, 13.8, put that to the side just now, then turn this around and cut it at 13.8 again. So, therefore, I've got my square from my envelope and a panel for a card then with this piece that's left here I need to cut at 10.7 so 10.7 that way leave that piece to the side turn this at 10.7 seven there therefore I've got my little piece for my lovely box and then I've got another piece for a card then this bit is 10.3 by 16 so I'll just pop it in long ways cut it at 8 and I've got two equal size or almost equal size pieces okay so that's that bit done. So I'll bring in my envelope punch board and we'll do the envelope first. So we've got that. So the, the measurement for the envelope is 7.3. So it's a 13.8 square 
square in centimetres and I need to find the measurement 7.3. Now my centimetres are along here. They're not always easy to work with so sometimes I do work in inches but today I am doing centimetres. So it's at 7.3. So it, whoops, I've got my measurement. It's, this edge of the card here is at 7.3. So I punch and score. Now turn it round and I need to make sure that we have a bit of a problem here because I have damaged my board and this is just a bit squint. But we need that score line to be sitting in there. Okay. Is it thin? I think it's in. Can't see. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to bend that wee bit. The the light is actually not good in here and because I can't get right over the top I am struggling a wee bit. Oops to see. But you would find somewhere in your own house where you can work and you can see. I think that's it now. Okay, so score and punch or punch and score. I think we're all right there. And then again, just want that in there. Not sure if this is right, that's why I've stopped for a minute. Seems to be. We'll just go with it. I think it's okay. I just that's it. has worked out okay so it's it's that I started off at 7.3 which is there and each time punch and score like that and then turn it around and you don't need to measurement after that because what you're doing is you use that line and you, as long as that is sitting over your line then you will get your rectangle and then use the back here the back is there to so round off the corners. You don't have to, just so you know that that tool is there. Round off the corners of your envelope. Whoops. I'll keep that handy. And then a nice fancy tea bag to pop in it. a nice tea bag and if you just do your scores so this is great because there's not much cut now at all so there we go that's where we're going I'll just use a bit of Snail, sorry my words are somewhere else today, they're not with me. Just a bit of snail on, on these two slopes. What is going on? So put them over there and then that there. And there's my envelope. Easy as that. Pop in my gift in that situation. It's a tea bag. Pull that over. Uh, any idea where to put the ribbon? Here it is. Here's my lovely ribbon. I love this even weave ribbon. So I just took a length of it. I have no idea how much I used. Just where's my snips? Cut it 
at an angle then it went free. So you, you can, what I, do, I did with my other one was I just put the flap down. So I'm not actually um, sticking the flap down. Just put the ribbon around the ribbon. I'll keep it closed and then just, just a simple knot, to be honest. You can tie a fancy bow if you want. You could add a greeting, but I'm not. I'll just tidy my knot up. Try not cut your finger. I've just cut into my finger. How clever is that? Okay, so there's the pouch. So we'll move on and we'll now put that to the side. So we'll move on now and we'll do the box. Where is my piece of card for my box? There we go. So here's my square for my box. So for the box, I need this round this way so you can see. So I need two measurements. When you're doing a box with the envelope punch board, I need two punch and score measurements. The first one is 3.9. So there is 3.9. So it's punch and score. Move it along, slide it along to 6.8, that's two tiny notches before the seven. That's it. Punch and score. Now it's the same thing as the envelope except you're doing two on each side. So again, And always make sure that your card is hard against the line there so that you're doing it at the right angle. So I should have been, I, you get into a rhythm of punch and score but because I'm talking at the same time maybe not getting into. So just making sure that that bar is sitting over your score line. makes a cute little box. Sitting on properly. Punch and score. And then for the fourth time on the first one. Punch and score. And then the second one. Just make sure it's sitting on the on there, punch and score and then you end up with a shape like that. So the envelope punch board out of the way. Got bits everywhere here. I do have a bin but somehow or other forget to use it. So fold and burnish all your fold lines. on my phone like now this is the bit where you have to pay attention so get my other snips right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip and just so that you can see easier I'm going to use a pencil just to show you when I'm going to snip so I'm going to snip down that line to that fold that line to there that one and that one it's as simple as that. I, I could have rounded off the co the corners. I just haven't done that at the moment. I might decide to do it after. But right now, I'm just going to cut up to the score line. Same here, up to the score line. Turn it round all the way at 180 degrees round. Up to the score line. And up to the score line. Now just for tidiness, I taking a small wedge off the inside very thin wedge it just makes means it's easier to to stick together and to 
move around if you need it to. Okay, and just for the purposes of this video, I am just going to use a bit of snail on each flap. You might want to use wet glue. Um, so it depends on how you want to shut this box, how you're going to to put it together. So if you want it to be a box that you can tuck in, you, you can tuck everything in that way and then you can use this for closing. And you can tuck it, tuck them in that way, or so you can glue all the other sides down and just keep this open. Or you can do it <laughs> this way and glue these with the sides up, and then you've got the kind of starry opening like that, and then you can put in whatever you're going to put in your box in there. So it's your choice, whatever you want to put in. So I'm just going to glue the flaps. If you need this to last forever, I wouldn't use snail. It's not really strong enough. But it, it's strong enough to give us a small gift and I'm going to tie a ribbon around it anyway. So again, it's just pull, pull your sides up, put your flaps in. And just take your time, make sure it's nice and neat. There you go, you have a box. I don't know what you want to put in this one. Put in some, put it in some sweeties, I don't know what I've got lying about here. Do you know, you could give a gift. I had washi tape lying about somewhere, I don't know where that's gone. about just now. That's too big. If you've got some washi tape you want to give to a friend there look that just holds a nice so you could fasten it up like that so again you, could, you don't actually need to fasten it up if you tie a ribbon around that you're not going to see you could put, be putting a sentiment over there. Well, it's the end of the reel, so we'll just take the last bit off the reel then. Oh, I do need to stock ribbon. Oh, yeah. I think I need to put a ribbon order in very soon. So what I did was, I just I did it like it was a, a wee Christmas parcel. Wrap it round, twist it round, like that. And then you could trim it off. I'm not actually going to keep it like that. I've got one here as well that I did earlier. You could, you, I just, I'll trim that off. Pro I'll take my time and I'll show you that in a minute. I'm not going to waste all of that ribbon so I will tie the bow to at one end and um, keep a piece. So there you have it. I have there is a jump in the film, I apologise for that, but I um, I tied off the envelope so it's similar to the one I did before and I've tied off the bow. Um, so that's these two bits of, that's our two envelope punch board pro project, uh, <laughs> yeah, project's done. And so now I'm going to stamp the greetings and make up the greetings for my card so I am using to do that and I've not got it here to show you I, I'm bringing in another stamp set here because the touches of texture is a fabulous set but it doesn't have any sentiment so this is a fantastic uh, stamp set which actually I won last year for, um, um, 
and I was sent this from our head office in the UK. I can't, it was some kind of competition. I can't really remember what I won it for. But it was for taking part in something. Oh, I, I think it was to do with the um, Ronald McDonald charity um, events that we held for the last few years. Um, Stamping Up have changed how they do, they still do support charities, but they've changed how they do that a bit. But we used to have an event, and I think it was for speaking about my event um, on the UK forum. So, and I, I was drawn at random, and I got to choose a stamp set so this is it at least I think that's what it was for but I've always liked I always liked this stamp set and I treasure it because I did win it um which is nice and it's nice to get something for nothing it what one that is one of the um, great things about being with them um, stamping up they are a very generous company and they are very generous to their demonstrators when we go to our big events etc we come back with uh, goods to the value of way more than we pay to go to these events um, and there are often competitions and draws and just you know generally they just recognize our hard work out here in the field and they they do reward us beautifully for that so thanks stamping up you've given me an amazing hobby and allowed me to meet amazing people so that was a wee bit of a digression, but do you know what? I am passionate about my stamping up and I, I make no bones about it. I don't hide it. So I'm going to use this thank you set to do the greetings. Um, I've already um, inked up, not inked up, blocked up some that I'm going to do. Oh, and I've got this, so, and I'm going to need early espresso and Merry Merlot. How's this? Because do you know what? I love coffee. I also like red wine. Merlot's not my favourite grape of choice, but you know what? It's probably my second. Maybe not, but it's close to that anyway. I do like a wee Merlot. My husband loves a Merlot. Um, so we merry Merlot and our early espresso, and you know I'm happy. Coffee and red wine. What more could you need? Right, so for this, for two of them, I'm going to do. Thank you. Do you know what? My early espresso needs re-inked. But I don't have an early espresso re-inker. So instead of getting the re-inker, I'm actually going to buy it in the new style pad. Like I did recently with my... Um, what one? Cur crushed curry and my Cajun craze. They were a bit dry, so I replaced them with new style pads. I actually like the new style pad better. It's easier to open, so... And then make sure that's going to be up the right way. So, thank you. You're the best. So I'm doing the you're the best with the Mary Merrill. There we go. That's two. And the other two I'm going to do with you are amazing. I'm just putting it straighter on the block. Um, I'll do that with. I'm going to do it with the Mary Merlot actually. Just just because. I'm just going to pop that in the middle. You can stamp first. I <laughs> did upside down, but it doesn't matter because it's a circle. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? You can stamp first and then punch, but sometimes I quite like to punch first. So there you go. That's the words. I'm going to stick some bumblebees on here to tie in with the, pa the nice paper that I did. So we'll use the early espresso for that. And we'll just pop a wee bee. Maybe on there and on the bottom. Just stamp him off a little bit. There we go. just for a bit of interest and then just quickly with a bit of snail on the back of each one we'll layer them up you can use wet glue of course I'm just doing it quickly for the video so we don't 
I do have one more little bit of stamping to show you. So we'll just quickly pop these together. So that's it's just so that we can make the four cards up fairly quickly. Now the reason I've used these punches, I've used my two inch circle punch and my starburst punch because they go together really well. So there you go, There's, do you know if you're thinking about signing up and you're looking for what you might want to put in your starter kit, this is a good suggestion, the equipment that we've used here. I haven't priced it up but I will do that um, later and pop it in my blog. You know, all things thanks. Really, we all need to say thank you so it's nice sentiments touches of texture some berry vanilla card the six colours that I've used here um, your envelope punch board so I'll, I'll price up a kit and let you see you know if you're signing up just now it's £170 worth of products you can choose whatever you want to choose for £99 if you want to build Stampin' Up! into a business, you'll get all the support you want. If you just want the discount, if you just want to be a hobby demonstrator and get the discount for the, because you love to craft, then that's that's fantastic too. You're more than welcome. You know, Everyone's welcome at whatever level they want to operate. No one will pressure you to build it into a business. Just come on board and get the discount and see what you think. So you know we'll price that up and give you a chance but if you ever do want to sign up this is a really good time so put them to the side just now ready on the pile and then I need to get some flirty flamingo ink and a block that out of the way where's my flirty flamingo where are you So what I'm going to do is put a bit of texture onto the blank card. So I've got four four card bases here that I've cut in Flirty Flamingo. Just my usual style. Just half a sheet of A4 folded in half. That's me. That's my style. Pardon me. And... The long lace stamp, pop it on a block. Sometimes I take the ink to the stamp, Just probably that's not best for doing this because I want to do it fairly quick. So I'm just popping some texture on this card by just using the lace and I'm doing it on this one, I'm doing it diagonally. Not particularly paying attention to how I'm doing it. Some texture, you can do it. You can see, you can do it on an angle, you can do it straight. Doesn't matter if you overlap. You're just putting some texture like that just didn't it's better it's amazing stamp this just doing that one the same way again Very quickly, just hadn't stamped properly there, but that's okay. And I think it's just the way because I'm not working over, or maybe not getting enough ink on my stamp. But because I'm going to be sticking layers on here, it doesn't matter. But that looks fab anyway. I never was going to use that, and then just 
Again, we'll just do this one at an angle just to show you. you they don't have to touch, they can touch, it really won't matter at all. And it's good that, you know, I'm not getting even per pressure because it just gives it more texture that way. <laughs> so I've texturised and given, see I've given them a bit of depth. i pop these out of the way and then we'll make the cards up. And put that in there, they all need to clean so we'll just put them all in one place. So there I've got, you know, now that I'm finished inking, what I'll do is take this messy sheet away. So I've got my four base cards. I've got the pieces that I cut. I've got my sentiments. Three, four sentiments. One, two, Three, four pieces that I cut while I was cutting out the squares. These are the four leftover pieces from cutting the squares off. So it should be four and I've only got three. What have I done? I don't like. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's hiding from me. Okay, so I've got four pieces of card. And what I did was I cut out four pieces of early espresso card. Um, four millimetres larger all round. Um, I will write. I will do write a blog later tonight, and I will put all these measurements in because you know you would never to to try and listen to them is really hard. But so what I'm going to do is layer up the cut the bits of card with that. And where did we put my snail? Again, I'm just using my snail just for the video. But I would, you know, I would take the time and use some wet glue. Obviously, if you're using dry glue it you have to be a bit careful about getting it lined up if you use wet glue you do have a minute or two to adjust it so where's the biggest piece here this is the big piece so we'll just I wouldn't say this is a particularly quick project. We managed it. We managed it in two and a half hours and that was with a lot of chatting and um, we stopped for a wee drink and a snack. We chatted a lot. Um, my two ladies this morning and myself. This one, the last one layered up. So just a, a project for you. So a nice afternoon of crafting for anyone. There we go. Maybe a spit squint, but it'll be okay. So then I'm just going to stick these onto a card and then I will use dimensionals if I know where I put them. Did my dimensionals come back through after class? Do you know? Because right at the moment. Oh, yay! We have our dimensionals. We'll be able to sort that out. I'm just. Because I might want to put some of these in the post, I am just going to pop these. Oops. On flat. I'm putting some putting that one to the side and up a wee bit and then I'm gonna pop this with dimensionals. I should have put the dimensionals on the back. Sometimes if I'm doing a few projects, in fact that's what I'll show you to do. Is turn these upside down just you know just cuts the time down a wee bit for you so put that one 
going on there and I'm going to take this Well, we make it in three parts for this I'm just pu putting that down there like that thank you you're the best that's one and not talk too much and I'll never get them done this one I'm going to put that right in the middle I think I don't know am I who knows I never know what I'm going to do really until I'm doing it choose a sentiment you're amazing you're amazing for stuck stuck in with me for sticking with me this far through the film if you've got this far you've done great but I hope you've used like the fast forward button and things just so that you um, this one is a big one I'm going to put that more to the side there this doesn't want to come off that's it so I'm just peeling the backing off. Hopefully this I'll have done this film in just three parts. You are amazing. Another one and one left. So whoops. to do this one. I don't know what way it goes in my head but I'm going to put it up there a little bit. Maybe there. I'm going to have it opening and closing that way so thank you. You're the best. So I've done what I've done is I've given myself a good old stock of um, thank you cards so this one's going there. So thank you, you're the best, you're amazing, you're amazing, and thank you, you're the best, that's my cards, and my little envelope of a tea bag. so do you know you can give a card and a gift, so therefore, then I've got my little box, my lady's got two little tubes of um, love hearts in there, but I don't have any of them left, so that's that and that's from when I made the project I've got four cards to, um, and pro the projects as well so I'm stocked up again so thank you so much for sticking with me everyone I hope you've enjoyed this project I hope you'll have a go at doing something similar just do you know what they say stamp your art out stamp your heart out just stamp it's so relaxing it's so I just love it, it's great fun. Um, so, as I said already, thank you so much. Please subscribe, please share my video with any of your crafty friends. Just put it out there, you don't know who'll, who'll enjoy what I do. Thank you so much. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you'll get notification of what's coming next. I do have a great project coming up soon. Thank you very much.